Hey, I'm RC and this is the first episode of how it's made in Raining Chain. So in this video, I will be covering how the interfaces were made in Raining Chain. This is by far the most um, common topic I get from you guys. So I want to cover it first. Now, keep in mind that this series is aimed towards advanced coders. And the goal of this series is not to teach you how to make interfaces. The goal is to show you how it was made in Raining Chain so you can use that knowledge and the general concept to make your own. Now, another thing I want to make clear is that there are many ways to create interfaces. I do not claim that the way I'm, I use for ranging is the best, and it's probably not the best for your game in particular. But like I said, the goal is to show you how it's made in Raining Chain. So that's what I'm going to do. So in Raining Chain, there are three main libraries related with um, the rendering. First of all, there is EJS, which is a library on the server that is used to combine HTML files. So every piece of interfaces as its own HTML file. And then I combine them all together to create the um, game HTML, game.html, and I send that to the client. So this is what I do. We'll put the link in the description if you want to check out the, the documentation. But like I said, the goal is not to show you exactly how it's done, just to give you a, a rough idea of how it's possible. And then it's your job to go and check the documentation. So anyway, so there's EGS. After that, there's Vue.js. So most of the interface is done with Vue.js. This is like the core and it's for the data binding. And we'll cover that a little bit um, pretty soon. But basically, it makes um, updating the values what you see a lot easier. There's really, um, really cool features that EGS has. And another thing is that it's very lightweight. So it can be um, used pretty easily. It's very easy to include it to an existing game. Because back in the days, I had Raining Chain with an entirely different um, interface system. And then I wanted to change it. And I decided to go with Vue.js because it was very easy to implement to an existing game. And finally, there's jQuery UI. So this is um, used for all the pop ups. So this over here, this is done with um, jQuery UI, like the window itself. Okay, so with that being said, let's check the overall aspect of the interfaces. So I'm gonna open the dev tools. And as you can see over here, that's my minimap. That's my menu, my um, resource bar, the chat, P PVP party, then the feedback. So all of those elements are um, separated. So each of them has its own HTML file. And I got one big HTML file that combines all the other HTML files. Probably not super clear. So I'm going to show it to you now. Uh, no, it's not actually again. It's the game div. Okay, there we go. So this is the main HTML file in the game. So it's called the game div. And inside the game div, um, in the top left div. So I got a div containing all the things in the top left position. So in the top left, we can see we got the minimap, we got the performance, we got the quest end. So minimap, this is the performance. If I start a quest, you will be able to see the quest end. So the content of the HTML is not there, but by using the um, EGS library, whenever you see this um, percentage sign, this means go grab the file minimap.html and place its content over here. That's what it's going to do. So in this file, I do all the absolute positioning. So I position the minimap, I position the, the um, performance with a specific width, then I got the party overlay, the quest buttons, pop ups, all of that is all positioned over here. So inside the for example, the minimap, I do not specify where the minimap is going to be inside the minimap.html. All of this, what it this does is just define what a minimap is. And then it's up to the parent, in that case, the game div to position it and specify the size. So that pretty much covers EGS. Now I'm going to talk about um, Vue.js, which is really the core of the interface. So what EGS does is that it uh, creates a binding between an interface and a JavaScript object. So whenever you update the JavaScript up object, it's going to automatically update the interface. So I'm going to show a little example over here. So as you can see over there, there's my HP bar. So it's pretty full. Now I got a, a um, what's it called a JavaScript object called VD resource bar. 
to this over here and I got for example the HP so this is the HP and whenever I change this value so one of the field of this it's gonna automatically update this field so there's like a hidden binding like a hidden link between the two and as you can see it's not only the number that change it's the number and the width of the HP so it's pretty pretty powerful and I can change it back to one I can change it to any value and it's all gonna be updated automatically okay so now I'm gonna show you how it's coded so first in the game div we got in the top right corner so this is the, the div containing all the elements in the game so over here we got our resource bar.html so this refers to this file and if you remember correctly um, with the include is gonna take all the HTML code over here and place it over there it's just a lot more convenient to have it in separated files so that's why I use EJS so anyway in this um, file so this is one piece of interface everything that has a curly bracket over here means that it's a Vue.js binding so it it will not actually render curly bracket and then the level I'm not going to do that it's gonna go get the value of the level and return the, the, the value of the level. So for example, if I was level one, it would display this and not with the curly bracket. And if my fame was this, it would display that. So the list of um, all the attributes, for example, my HP was over here. So HP, I got mana, I got all of that. So what you do is that you create a view um, objects and you define a list of properties. So for example, in my case, I got if the HP is visible or not, the maximum HP, HP, mana, level, all of that. So those are all the variables that are bound with the interface. So whenever I change this, it's gonna affect anything that has double curly bracket with HP. So it's gonna affect this, for example. Now, another great thing that Vue.js has is computed variables. So I don't know if you remember, but when I changed the um, the HP, the resource bar, so that the length, the width of the bar also changed. So now it's smaller. And if I do that, it's gonna be bigger. And I can also change the levels. For example, the level I want to be 100, it's gonna display 100. Because if you check over here, I say, hey, display whatever the value of level is. Um, so. Like I said, one thing about Vue.js is that it has a thing called computed. And how it works is that whenever um, it's going to automatic, it, it, instead of displaying like a simple variable, just convert that to the value of the level, convert that to the fame. What you can do is actually specify a formula that will return the value it's kind of like a function it's basically a function so for example over here I say a hey, the width I want the width of this bar to be equal to the result of the function HP width so this is a function a computed value and this is what it does it's gonna do a min max between that and that multiply by 100 add percentage so the result of this will become the width of my bar and you can do pretty advanced stuff with that. So this is like an easy example. We can do really crazy stuff. Um, and it's going to update automatically. So whenever there will be a change with HP, whenever there will be a change with HP max, it's going to automatically update the width. So I don't need to say, hey, refresh the HP width. It automatically knows that whenever the HP changes, it also needs to update the HP width. OK, so it's pretty cool, but now I need to make a link between the player changes HP and this value got changed. Because for example, if I do a the player HP is now, let's say 1000, it's not going to update this over here because there's no binding between the player HP and the resource bar HP. So there's no link between them. So what I did in the game is that whenever an HP changes, it's gonna trigger this function over here. So whenever anywhere there's an HP change, this function is called, I check A, is the player um, the one that got its HP changed? If so, update V is the, um, 
the view binding. So V is the equivalent of the view resource bar in that case. So it's gonna update the HP attribute. So whenever I receive a HP package, this is actually sent from the server. So whenever the server send me a HP package, if the package concern the player, update the Vue.js binding HP equal to whatever the new value is. And then it's gonna do all the binding and update the, the interface stuff. So this is how it's done. So it, it's pretty much always the same pattern. I create the all the, the values that can change. I create the interface using all the values and then I create a bunch of listeners or event or whatever you want to call them. So I can know when something changed, update the, the Vue.js and then the Vue.js update the interface. Another very cool stuff you can do with Vue.js is looping through an HTML element. So duplicating HTML elements. Normally you cannot do that with pure HTML but with Vue.js you can. So I'm gonna show you the menu example. So as you can see, I got a bunch of menu buttons. I did not manually put like created one um, HTML element for each of those interfaces. What I did is I'll view HTML. There's something called the for v4. So this loops through elements. Elements is a actually it's gonna be easier if I show you the. JavaScript code first. So this is the data for my Vue.js elements. So there's a lot less variables. There's if the menu is flashing, if the dropdown is visible, and then all the elements inside it. So this is an array. This is very important. And this is each row. So each button I want to do. So this is purely custom. You can put any variable you want inside that. And um, in my case, I got view element not really important, but I got like the detail of the inventory, the task, the quest, the progression, all of that. And what I do, and keep in mind that the variable associated with it is elements. So over here, what I do is I loop through every item in elements. So I loop through this, and then I'm going to loop through that. And then I'm going to loop through this, I'm going to do that. And for each of them, create a new div. So this is create a new div. And with that div, it's going to have, it's going to be visible if the item, item is the value of the element. So for example, this is the first row. So if the first element of the array is visible or this element of the array is visible, then you're going to show it. You can show I lots of stuff. If you click on it, it's going to call the function on click with the parameter item input ID. And it's going to flash if it's flashing, I'm gonna add a class glowing to the, the element. Then I'm gonna add like the image, then the title depending on the item, and then the text. So you can do pretty advanced stuff. Like once again, the goal of this video is to simply show you roughly uh, what is possible with Vue.js. My goal is not to show you how to do that specifically because it's, it's a pretty, pretty complex topic. So yeah, as you can see, it can get pretty complex. I'm probably going to spend 15 minutes just showing what is possible with Vue.js and what I've done specifically for Raining Chain. Um, so if people are interested, I could dedicate it an entire YouTube series to creating interface with Vue.js. That could be cool if people are interested, but for sure I cannot cover in detail how to do it in How It's Made series, in the How It's Made series. So anyway, um, that's another feature so you can loop through elements and this is used at many many places uh, One of them one easy example is inside the achievements. So this over here So yeah, the code behind this is this over here So we got an achievement which is a table It's an, a giant big table and inside the table we loop through um, the variable called list and for each of them, we display the name, then we display the description. If it's completed, we say complete and complete. Um, depending on the type of reward, we are going to display different stuff. Sometimes it's plus experience, sometimes it's items, sometimes it's waypoint. Then we got the complete count. So the complete count is a computed variable. Like it's well, actually, I'm going to show you. It's going to be easier. So, for example, the complete count is a computed. 
So whenever there will be a change with the list, it's going to automatically update the amount of achievement you have completed. Um, now the list. Okay, each element of the list has all of those properties. And whenever there's a change, for example, this I have completed a new achievement, for example. So the server is going to send me a package called achievement one, and I'm gonna grab the element that matches the, the ID, and then I'm gonna update the text and update its completionness, if it's completed or not, and then do other stuff. You can also add um, functions, so when you click on it, it's gonna select the element or toggle the selected um, you can do all sorts of stuff uh, one thing I forgot to mention about having one HTML file per interface is that you can when creating them you don't need to load the entire game to see how it's gonna turns out so um, how I made it is that I can go to this URL so views game menu and then I can see in real time how it's gonna look so I don't need to log into the game and do stuff like that to have a rough idea of how it's going to look. So obviously, uh, like I said, all the interfaces don't know where they are going to be in the game. It's the job of the parent to position and to resize um, the interfaces part. So if you remember correctly, it's inside the game div over here, the menu. So it's the menu that says, hey, you have a width of 130 and you're floating right, for example. And um, and the, the child, the, the job of the child or this piece of interface is to fit in whatever dimension um, it will be. So yeah. So it's a, another very useful thing for adding one HTML file per interface. And finally, I want to end it with um, jQuery UI. So jQuery UI is uh, what makes this pop up possible. So basically, it creates a empty. Normally, without um, like without any content, it would simply be this window with no content over here. You can drag it, you can resize it. I disabled the, the resizement because it glitches uh, interfaces, but um, you can resize it and all of that. Obviously, I customized it, so I put it brown and then I added a nice little button. I think the original button is pretty ugly for the close, but if there it it works. It's just not. Nice looking. And in order to customize the look, you use CSS. So with CSS, you can, uh, for example, with CSS, I created, yeah. For example, I got classes. You define a bunch of classes. For example, the color inside a UI box is white. This is the padding. This is the border. And I think if I go dialog, okay, it's over here. So inside the jQuery, inside the jQuery, the color is white. This is the font. This is the border. So the border is like the, the brown. So this makes everything brown. Then I add padding, other padding, and you can customize it with um, CSS. So yeah, there's still a lot of stuff to cover. So for example, this is not actually CSS. It's called SCSS, and you can do function inside it, but that will be a topic for another day. So even though the, the video is, I think, 18 minutes long already, there's still a lot of stuff I wanted to cover, but unfortunately I will not have the time. So there's the inventory. So the inventory is probably the most complex um, interface I have in the game because it has many different contexts. For example, you have an equipment over here. So inside your um, inventory, then you got an interface, uh, an equipment inside a shop. So this is an in, a different version of the um, equipment. Then you got this one. So the buttons are different. For example, this is a cell. Well, in your inventory, it's a different, it's equip and disassemble. You get the bank. So bank has other buttons. There's trading, there's um, crafting. So crafting is different. There's also the drag and drop that I could cover. So there's many, many different topics I could cover, but unfortunately I don't have the time. So what I want you guys to do right now is to post in the comment section what topic you want me to cover next. So it can be related with interfaces. So like I said, there's SCSS or SAS that I could cover. There's the item system. 
like the interface for the items. Uh, maybe there's the drag and drop that would you would want me to cover. There's also um, a different system for updating uh, more advanced interfaces. For example, the interface is not purely with Vue.js. It's a little bit more complex than that because I need to um, create an image. So a little bit more complex. So probably minimap would be an entire um, topic by itself. The wall map is also kind of cool with the little button and all of that. All of that, th this part over here is all done with um, Vue.js, surprisingly. And I, I could also cover a little bit more about the, the pop-up. Like I say, I, I'm running out of time. So thanks a lot for watching. And like I said, don't forget to post in the comment section what you want me to cover next. So thanks a lot for watching and 